Hello, this is Deborah Anderson, the Black Woman Animator, coming back to you with another video. And in this video, I have Nerd and Momadou. So welcome to my platform. Thank you very much for having me. So can you introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Nuruddin Momodu. I'm a, I'm a 3D generalist. I'm also an animation producer. I, I have been an animator for about almost six years now. Or I do more than just animation. I create characters, um, producing my kids show right now, and I do lots of freelance work. That's nice. Yeah. So first question, uh, where are you from? How was it growing up? Oh, okay. Um, I'm from Nigeria. I currently live in Lagos. I grew up here in Lagos and um, art was not really a career choice for me while I was growing up because nobody could see how I could make a living from it. So I went to school and I studied something else. I studied microbiology in university, graduated mm -hmm. from school. I wasn't passionate about that. I always loved to draw when I was much younger and I decided to just follow my passion animation and teach my soul animation. Yeah. So um, what was your kind of journey in art and animation during your childhood? Did you always draw or what? Uh, watch? Did you always watch movies? Like what, what was your journey? Well, I, I think I used to draw a lot. Like when I was much younger, I loved, um, I loved lots of superhero cartoons, Superman, Spider-Man. But I also watched a lot of um, Cartoon Network, so Tom and Jerry, Dex's Laboratory, Pop Up Girls. I loved them so much. You know, the, the art style was just beautiful. Um, that was basically my background in school. I sorry, my background when I was much younger. I used to draw a lot, you know, but I, I wouldn't consider myself like I never went to that professional route of trying to improve my drawing skills, like learning perspective drawings and all those things. I just found it as a way to just express myself creatively. So whatever just came from my head, I just put it down. And most times it wasn't necessarily animation or character. It was just, it could be abstract, you know? So art was the way I just, I, I, art was the way I used in expressing myself when I was much younger because I was kind of like a loner because I was quiet and, and the only way I could express myself was through art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so once you started pursuing animation, were your parents supportive of you going to the artistic side? Um, I wanted to, I wanted to drop out of school in my final year, like 300 level. That's like my year three. I, I was ready to drop out of school because that was the first time I, I, I found out that you could, you know, you could, you could follow the part of animation and, you know, make a career of animation. Um, I was even thinking because there are no animation schools in my country. So I was thinking of like going to India to study animation, but my parents couldn't afford it at that time. And they just felt like. You know what? You're in your third year. Why not just finish school first, and then you could think of that. So um, I graduated from school, finished, but I couldn't get like a, I couldn't get a job, and I wasn't passionate about microbiology. So um, my mom, my mom wanted me to you know go back to school and do my master's degree, but I wasn't just cut out for for that. My dad was more supportive at the initial stage. He was one who encouraged me to follow my passion and um, you know go learn animation. But eventually, my mom warmed up to it, and um, she was a, she was the person who bought me my first graphic tablets. That was like in 2014. You know, when she saw how serious I was and mm -hmm. focused on there, I wanted to learn. So she she warmed up to the idea of me becoming an animator. So, like, how did you choose microbiology? <laughs> <laughs> um. I was a science student in, in secondary school. I always loved, I love science. You know, mm -hmm. I'm up to, even even right now, I watch lots of documentaries on YouTube, my spare time. I love I love science. Mm -hmm. And and I really loved biological sciences. I love the art of life. Right when I was when I was when I was much younger, I used to read big biology textbooks and understand them, and I was really interested in that. And I loved animals. I used to take care of animals. I used to try and you know do all those things kids used to do. So my, my mom just felt like, you know what, with all these you like in biological sciences and you love animals, then you should become a doctor. Because in here back in Nigeria then, you know, if you if you became a medical doctor, you had like job security and all. So I, I entered into the university to study medicine, but mm -hmm. after my first year, I dropped out because 
I just was I wasn't caught up for it. It was too serious. I was always reading. There were lots of textbooks to read. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it just wasn't my 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 career choice. So I, I told myself I needed to like change departments and I looked through all the courses that were available and microbiology seemed to be like the only thing I was interested in. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I, I I did not enjoy the course because while I love biological science, I love things I could see. I love animals getting their feedback, but microbiology is you have to look at things under the microscope it yeah. felt so and it felt so abstract and i wasn't enjoying it so that's that's how i find myself in microbiology so um you know being from nigeria what is your favorite you know uh cultural tradition or custom that you all have oh man. nigeria is a very big country with mm -hmm. lots of traditions mm -hmm. um, lots of, uh, of tribes and ethnic groups and languages so um it's going to be pretty difficult for me to say that this is exactly what i love there are just different aspects of of nigeria i, I love like mm -hmm. the western part of nigeria is big on music afrobeat um i love afrobeats a lot you know the, the eastern side of nigeria is more focused on commerce you know they are hustlers they love to do business i love that side of them and then the northern side of Nigeria is there are lots of farming going on there. There's also a rich um, ancient history there as well. The monarchs, uh, you know, their traditions and all. I'm also interested in that as well. So there are just different elements of my country that I that I find interesting, nice. not just one. Yeah. Um. So, what are some projects that you have worked on? Uh, I know M M Malika, the warrior queen. Yeah, I worked on that. Uh, what um, are some other projects? So uh, I basically started out with um, doing commercials. I worked in an animation company where it was much, much more focused on doing commercials for brands here in my country. I did that for like two years. Then I moved to another animation studio where I worked on. We, we also did a couple of commercials. We did some TV shows that did not come out, but um, I, I well then I worked on um, Frogek. That's like that's a, a um, it was supposed to be a movie, but we couldn't get the funding to do that. Mm -hmm. Before um, we now made Malaika. And Malaika was the last project I worked on while I was at the studio. I left there and um, to just do my own thing. And I produced my first proof of concept, which is Jagaban. Mm -hmm. um, it's out on YouTube. I did that, and I did I did I did a couple of freelance jobs for a while. And right now, I'm producing my own TV show, Time Tech Kids. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be five episodes. And each episode is about three minutes long. And currently in production. And hopefully, first quarter of next year, it should be done. So can you tell us more about the uh, concept of Jagaban? OK. Um, Jagaban, Jagaban was actually, if, if I'm going to be honest, the story for Jagaban did not come before the character. The character came first and inspired a story. Mm -hmm. I, I made that character. His name is Hakim. I made him about four, four, five years ago, and I just kept on improving on the character design as the years went on. And I just felt like I wanted to do something with this character. And the best way I could, because we always said, write what you know, write what you know. You know, I'm not traditionally a writer. Mm -hmm have ideas for stories i don't write them down and i felt like i looked around my surroundings and one of the major things we face here politically is the old do not want to leave power for the younger generations mm -hmm. when i was much younger they told me i was the leader of tomorrow um i'm an adult now and it's still telling me i'm the leader of tomorrow <laughs> while the people fought for my country were my age and mm -hmm. there's right now you find older people there who do not want to leave positions for people that are my age range so i did this whole concept of creative vigilante kind of character who you know tries to go against the system so basically mm -hmm. hakim's father is um hakim's father is the tyrant he's the one who rules the land with an iron fist he comes from privilege hakim comes from privilege which his father is his ideology and his views on life is completely different from that from, from that of his father. So, his father his father own has the title called the Jagaban, which is like the leader of the land, and he just made it his goal that he's going to take back power from his dad and going to make sure that the younger generations have power. But he didn't do this alone. 
he had a group of friends and people around him who helped him to you know to take down the regime that's that's basically what jagaban is about with a lot of um tech uh, as well to it and all it's a futuristic thing but that's the concept for it and what do people have to look forward to with time tech kids um the the, the reason if i'm being honest the reason i did time tech kids was just very simple quality content quality animation that tells the story about african history but from a more tech point of view i love technology mm -hmm. a lot so youtube i'm always watching about the latest gadgets coming out or the new evs coming out rivians and all of them i love tech in general and i love things that are futuristic there are lots of stories that could be told about the past mm -hmm. but i'm just to stories of the future so time tech kids is basically two kids from the future who do have no idea of their their past they're mm -hmm. black but they have no ideas of their past but they travel around different times and locations in africa with their ai to learn about their history that's basically what time tech is about and the target audience is they is mostly while africans are a target audience here on the, on the continent but also for africans in the diaspora i'm black i'm black americans because a lot of those people have no idea about their culture mm. and i don't see shows that teach their kids about culture like i like i'm, I'm like like i'm like would keep, like the show i'm producing right now so that's the idea of time tech is try as much as possible in as much as it is educate in as much as it is entertaining i want it to also be educated as well that the yeah. kids watch this and at the end of every episode wow they learn something about africa they learn about the congo rainforest they learn about the kushite empire you know they learn about different times in africa they learn of the granite pyramid in the, in the northern part of nigeria in the 1960s Mm -hmm. So that's basically what Time Tech Kids is about, and that's what it's going to give kids black kids all over the world. I look forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, thus far, like, what do you feel like has been your biggest breakthrough in your career, or if you've had multiple? <sighs> Man, <laughs> it's a very tough question because, as, as far as I'm concerned, I feel like I'm not I'm not I'm not where I want to be. Really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm nowhere close to that, really. So um what I could just say to me, I, I wouldn't I would just say personal highlights for me was creating um the first proof of um, um short film Frogek while I was in my previous company where I worked. And then also um creating Jagaban. I think that was also a highlight for me because it was something I just needed to prove to myself that this idea I have in my head. I'm going to bring it out. I'm mm -hmm. going to put it to film, to animation. And I was able to do that. And also, this is my show I was producing because I'm producing the show myself. Yeah. I don't have help from anyone. I'm doing it myself. You know, so when I see how far I've gone, being able to put a team together, you know, fund the whole project, the stress, the problems I face during production, and I can see a light at the end of the tunnel, you know, that to me, those are the, those are things that make the highlight of my own career. You know when i see certain things i've done over the years so it's not just one point i think different points have gotten me to where i am right now and i just feel like time tech kids it's it's a logical step forward and it is going to it's going to be what will take me to the next place nice yeah. <clears throat> why why is sharing your knowledge important to you like training people and teaching people animation yeah um it's something it's it's something i'm probably i'm very big on and it's something i've just not really had the time to do it the way i want but from time to time i try to teach why do i do that i didn't go to an animation school there are no proper animation schools in nigeria everything i've learned i've learned on youtube mm -hmm. and it has taken me six years to get to where i am to learn the things i've learned and i wish there were people like me in my time that could have taught me Probably it would have taken me a lot shorter to get to where I've gotten to. And I'm a generalist. I do a lot of things. Yeah. And there's some parts of the animation process that I don't like, but I had to learn it. And it had, had to and it had slowed my growth in other aspects as well. You know, so like when I look at the, the people who are coming after me, they have the luxury to specialize. In my own time, if you're not a generalist, you're gonna go hungry. But now you could specialize. So training people to be specialists right now. Is something I really want to do. Why do I say that as well? Putting a team together to produce time tech is a big headache for me. 
because I needed people and I couldn't find people. I couldn't find people. And I, I, I asked myself, okay, if, if eventually I get the funding to make this thing, produce it even bigger, do I have the manpower to do that? And the only way I can make an impact is to give back the knowledge I have, to train more hands, to also use this knowledge I have to get people out of poverty, to get people, give people an opportunity. So that's why training is important to me. I, I for, for like a year or so, I haven't really done training, but it's part of the pipeline. It's something I want to do properly. And I hope that from next year, I will have the time to structure it properly. If possible, have people on board with me that will work with me and then teach and give back the knowledge I have. Um. So why do you feel like it's important for Africans to tell African stories? It might, it might just sound, it might, well, it, it will sound cliche, but the truth about the matter is I'm an African. <laughs> I cannot tell an American story. Mm -hmm. I can tell, I can tell an African American story mm -hmm. because I'm not African American. I did not grow up in that world. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it takes to be an African American. All I know about being an about being an African American is what I see on TV. Mm -hmm. Let's not even talk about being white or being um, Asian and all. You cannot tell a story like the way the people who experienced it will tell the stories. Most of our stories were passed down orally to us. You know, so it's important for us to tell our story. Why? Because it prevents. It prevents people from telling stories about us from one perspective, from the perspective of slavery, mm -hmm. from the perspective of poverty. Mm -hmm. so because when we tell our stories, we tell our stories from a different light. Well, yes, there is poverty everywhere in the world, but there are important stories that we have to tell about our culture. Our way of life is just as important as anyone else anywhere in the world and it is up to us, and it should be our sole responsibility to let people see that perspective. That's why it is important for us to tell our own stories. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you love about animation? <sighs> <laughs> animation. Um, I, I like the fact that you could create characters and you could create worlds that would not exist in real life. You could tell stories about the future that you could not tell right now. And animation has a way of, of making you happy, really. The world is it's a terrible place. Mm -hmm. But when you watch a good animated movie or show, you know, it just lifts your spirit up. You know, I love the, I lo I love the art of storytelling with animation. I'm fascinated by it. And while at times I'm not going to lie, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I, I don't like it so much because of the stress that comes with it being professional, deadlines, and you know, the money spends and all. But at the end of the day, when I look back at everything I've done, what makes me happy when I watch an animated movie is that it, I'm lost in what I am seeing. Someone created, or people, or a group of people created a new world that has never been seen anywhere and created new characters that have never been seen anywhere. And then they brought them to life. That's what I love about it. And then the stories you could tell with these characters. That's what I love. Nice. Um, so let's talk about the landscape of animation in Nigeria. Um, what do you think are some of the ways Nigerians um, become interested in animation and what is the growing interest like in the country? Um, from when I learned animation to now, it has improved. Lots of people, I think the biggest problem is awareness. People don't, there's still, there's still a lot of people that don't know that animation is a career. You know, they feel like uh, it's something you do by the side. It's not, a, it's not something you do full time. So the awareness, seeing more people like them create animation, gives them that inspiration to say, you know what, I want to get into animation as well. That's a major thing. Then also, more as, as more animation, animation projects come out of Nigeria, you know, it gets people interested. People want to know what's going on. And also the commercial space has helped. 
because a lot of service jobs done with animation has also helped with exposure to animation. So people know, but it's still relatively a small, small industry, really. It needs money, it needs funding, it needs structure. It needs structure, it needs training, mm -hmm. it needs a lot of things. But the most important thing is that it has started and it can only grow. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, it. So like for people who find their way to animation, what are the opportunities for learning in Nigeria in general? Is it mostly YouTube? Are there any schools popping up? Um, for now, there are, there are no major schools here in Nigeria. Um, people do trainings here. There are some people who do trainings here and there, but all this is still not enough. So most times, the best way to learn is still on YouTube. You, No matter how much, even if there is a school here, you still need to cultivate the idea of learning yourself, teaching yourself, because you could go to school, maybe stay there for a year, you're out, and it's still not enough. You have to keep on learning, and that's where YouTube comes in. Mm -hmm. you know learn take courses i know so basically still youtube they are trainings here and there but still not enough uh what are the obstacles for individuals when it comes to learning or producing animation from a learning point of view i think first of all it's a mindset thing we still have this concept of sit down in a classroom and a teacher teaches me how to do something. You know, that's the first mindset that needs to be gotten rid of. Mm -hmm. A lot of us need to understand that in today's modern world, you need to be ready to teach yourself. The, 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 um, the knowledge is there, it's out there. You just need to learn to be able to find it and you need to have the discipline to be able to teach yourself. That's the first thing. The second one is, is lack of structure. You know, there is no there is no structure that that people who are interested in animation can go to this place and get information about a career in animation and talk to people who are already in the industry to give them tell them what obstacles they faced in their time. We don't have that. That mm -hmm. those are basically that those are basically the challenge from um, learning animation. Then for producing, the first one is is funding really you want to produce an animation in africa it's very difficult to get funding well first of all you're in africa you know second of all companies here who should be interested in animation don't see it as, as something they can invest in and get back their money immediately so nobody wants to touch it you know because it's long-term investment um and then you also try to compete with the international community as well it's it's really pretty difficult if you don't have the funding mm -hmm. and the second thing in producing that that's a big problem is the manpower we don't have enough enough skilled animators to put on projects to put on big projects to put on tv shows you know to put on movies we don't have enough manpower you know you want to produce a content you want to produce content in, in africa and when you tell people how many people were involved in this project they they find it difficult to believe you know, you have to do so much with so little. So those are the challenges we're facing with um, with, with animation, producing animation in this country. Mm -hmm. Doing so much with so little. Yeah. Um, let's see. What are the efforts currently being made to address those issues by the various people? Um, the only thing I know of is there is an... Um, Animation Nigeria thinks a group, I think is registered, that tries to share content about um, Nigerian animations. They have an Instagram page. They're also on LinkedIn. They try to just showcase works by, by Nigerians. But as far as I'm concerned, I have not really seen any major um, um, input from the government, really, because I just animation is, is is really expensive to produce that for you to kickstart that kind of industry you need funding from the governments and even if they say oh you know what oh, we, we gave out some funding to some people years ago it was not given to the right set of people it wasn't so mm -hmm. that's the challenge but there's a there's a there's a group 
animation Nigeria that tries to, you know, showcase Nigerian artists, animators, show their work, you know, and they have platforms for that. What do you feel is the unique thing that Nigeria or, or the continent can give to the animation world? It's the people. The people, that's just a very simple thing. Um, when I look at my kind of projects, like Jagaban is a proof of concept. Mm -hmm. You know, I when I, I, I use this as an example, when I went to I went to Annecy, Annecy in 20, 2019, yeah, and I showed my proof of concepts to some people when they saw it, they couldn't believe that this was done by an African, really. You know, it's not Pixar quality, but for one man, for me doing majority of the work myself, you know, it was quite impressive. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you had like 200 people like me, or even better than me in Africa. Just think about it. The talent is there. The talent is there. It just needs to be refined. It needs to be tapped. So mm -hmm. the unique thing that Africa gives the animation industry is the people, really. It's the people. Because you'll find people here, you'll find talented, you find artistic, creative people here in Africa that are hardworking that you won't find anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. They have just not been found. Yeah. That's it. So there are projects like um, Iwaju by Kugali being produced by uh, Disney. Do you see this as a door opening for more African stories to be told? Um, I'm not on that production, so I could I could not really say much about it. But all I'll say is it's a good thing, you know, mm -hmm. foreign studios wanting to tell African stories. The only thing I'll say is, um, from a business standpoint, it, it's important for us to have the conversations about intellectual property, mm -hmm. royalties, and proper compensation. That's yes. all I have to say. It's a good thing because it shines light on on African artists because I know on that production I have a friend who is on it, uh, so it's a good thing because it produ it provides them with opportunities. But the other conversation about intellectual properties, royalties, and comp and proper compensation, I think mm -hmm. it needs to be had, and I think it needs to be properly structured and make sure that those things are put in place because we also deserve it. Yeah. What do you hope to see as far as um, diversity in stories and animation? <sighs> this um, this movie, um, Encanto, I think that's what it's called. This new Disney movie. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it, but it tells a story about um, a group of family in Colombia. Mm -hmm. I love to see stories like that told by told by Africans you know, in animation to that level of quality. Mm -hmm. I can talk about um, a young boy who finds his way out of his village in Nigeria to come hustle wherever it is, you know, just just tell, to tell stories about us, not just our past history, but about now yeah. and what could happen in the future as well. Mm -hmm. So basically that's it. Um, do you have any um, like expectations or desires uh, for working uh, together across the diaspora in animation? Absolutely. Like it's to me, it's it's something I look forward to really because um, on both sides of the continent, the knowledge, the knowledge that we need to share amongst ourselves, mm -hmm. there are things that, that people over there know, and there are things that we hear ourselves we know. We know. Encouraging that, um, what's the right word? Well, we working together, it's a good thing. It's a win-win situation for the both for both sides because we learn so much. So it's something I'm open to. It's something I would love to do. It's something I would love to be a part of, and it's something I hope to see more happen in the future. What are um, so? As a generalist, what can you speak to as the challenges um, 
that you face? I know you mentioned like not liking certain aspects of the animation pipeline. So, you know, there, you know, as you know, people who have the privilege of being specialists, there's are like certain challenges, but as a generalist, what are the challenges that are presented? Uh, the first thing is the amount of workload, the workload and problem solving. So most likely I say my biggest skill is problem solving because I run into lots of problems on production and it's up to me to solve them. That's the number one thing that's a challenge. The second one is their departments are like rigging. I don't like it in environment modeling. I don't find it particularly interesting. You know, I love characters. I love, I love creating characters. I love making the characters move. And I like lighting and rendering. I enjoy those parts of the process. But being a generalist and having to, to wear on so many hats itself, it's, it can be really challenging and stressful. And also, when you don't have enough skilled people on your projects, you tend to um, give up some quality because you are doing so much and you can't focus on it. And I, I, can't, I can't polish the animation as much as I would because there is still lighting that needs to be done. You know, yeah. I can't spend weeks or months on lighting the environment because there are characters that have to be animated. Mm -hmm. You know, so the environment, I want the environment as detailed as possible. I would love you son, or if I had like a team of people who could work on the environment for five months and give it all the detail and all the texturing, but there are characters that have to be modeled. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's so much work that that it's, it's times like this that make me say I hate it. Mm -hmm. Like really, I, it's too much work, you know. But when you see the final thing that you've done, regardless of all the challenges, regardless of all the stress you've gone through, when you see the finished product, when you when you try and compare it to it, because whether I like it or not, I try to compare my work with what's done in the US, what's done in big studios, and I look at it and it's not the same. But what consoles me or what gives me that hope is that. Look, that's a team with millions of dollars with world class artists working on those projects. Yeah. This is what you've been able to achieve on your own with a few people. You should mm -hmm. be proud of yourself. And I Definitely. try as much as possible to make sure that the quality is good enough for anybody anywhere in the world to watch. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's it. Um, what have you learned throughout your life and career that will be beneficial advice to others? <sighs> Do not compare yourself to anyone. It's a recipe for disaster and you will never be happy. Really. I am speaking out of experience. Mm -hmm. You know, being a generalist, I see some animators, they're, they're, they're specialists, and I look at their work and I'm like, oh my God, I don't know when, when, when am I going to get here? When am I going to have the time to sit down and go to school and learn to be a world class animator? Mm -hmm. Or when I see character designs that look so great, like, when am I going to get to this point? You know, at the end of the day, it makes me unhappy and it makes me look at my work and I feel like, you know, it's not good enough and I'm not moving at the pace I should. But what I've just learned over the years is everybody's part in life is different. You know, just enjoy the process of what you do. Mm -hmm. You might not be there, but you as long as you have an audience for your work, that's good enough. If you have people who want to watch what you have and people love, people appreciate what you've done, your hard work, your creativity, your talent, that's all that matters really. You don't need to compare yourself with anyone. You'll never be happy because you'll never be good enough, ever. You know, so that's, that's what we have learned. Then also, I'll say discipline. I struggle with it a lot as well. You know, when you say, you, when you tell yourself you do something and do it when you say you do it, if you can have that discipline as well in your career, you do what you say you do, you will do, then I think it will help a lot. That's why I, I, I tend to mention, talk about my project before it's done. Like, I don't tell people at the beginning stage, but once I've gone like halfway, I talk about it online. Why? Because I said I was going to do something and yeah. I have to be. I finish it, <laughs> you know, so it's a way of holding myself accountable. So that's mm -hmm. why I put out, especially when I start feeling like, you know, I'm tired or I'm, I'm losing interest in the project. 
then I put it out there. Then when I get the response from people and I see how much people are interested in it, it gives me that ginger back to want to continue doing what I'm doing and hold myself accountable. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it. Oh. Uh, so, um, what do we have for, uh, to look forward to coming to you in the future? Two projects. The first one I've spoken about is Time Tech Kids. Time Tech Kids is, is a show that I want to become commercial. I want to be able to build a team around it. I want to build a brand with it. I want to get people on board and I want it to make money. Mm -hmm. Because I'm an artist, I have to support myself. And I feel that projects like this have the ability to, you know, keep on funding my vision. That's the first, that's that's what I look forward to because it's something I want to keep on producing as much as I can. And I'm hoping to get as, as many help as I can. That's the first one. The second one is a short film that I've been working on for the past almost like four years now, really. I put it on, on social media and it's also a way to hold myself accountable because I put it out there and I must okay. finish it. Mm -hmm. I must fix it's a short film, it's really dear to me. And um my goal is to release it sometime late next year. I'm mm -hmm. currently working on it as well. I've been able to get like some someone else to help me on the project. I'm paying the person to work on that with me as well. And I'm hoping to release that short film next year. It's an it's an important short film, and I think it's a story that needs to be told. Okay. Um, what do you hope? uh nigerian animation professionals or even people who want, are interested in animation what do you hope they do in this current landscape to get into animation with all this access to kind of like online resources and stuff like that sorry could you repeat that question please uh what do you hope um nigerian animation professionals or nigerian people do in this current landscape um, to get into animation. So with the access of like technology and resources, what do you hope they're doing to try to build the workforce? The first one is like I, I said, I rightfully said, um, you know, it's a skill to be able to teach yourself. Like it's literally a skill on its, in itself. You know, we need to have more people who think that way. That, well, the knowledge is there, I have to go and find it myself. And I have to teach myself and I have to be consistent about it and I have to put in the work. And also the people already in the industry, at least we owe it to ourselves to to um to make ourselves at least a little bit accessible. I know it could be difficult, it could be difficult. You know, a lot of people reach out to me and I can't respond to everybody. I can't really, because I have my work I'm doing, I have other things, but we owe it to the next generation to make ourselves accessible. Why do I say that? um you could be a young person who is learning animation and oh you're looking up to one top animation who works in blizzard or blow animation studio and then he tells you how to go about it you well know, he's not going to tell you how to survive as an animator in nigeria he can't he doesn't have the experience to tell you how to build a career what are the challenges you face here in africa as an animator and we are the only ones who can tell those people let them know what mistakes we made in the past how we got because they have they took advantages of us how to make sure you don't get taken advantage of how to learn invoicing how do you price your work how do you constantly put out good work you know all these things we have to make ourselves accessible so that people can ask these questions and have answers okay, how did you do it how are you able to sustain yourself this far mm -hmm. you have to be able to we, we need to we need to make ourselves available for that that's, that's 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 basically what I think is is really necessary because yeah you know as so much as he's a great animator or he's a great storyboard artist and he works in blow he works in Disney he can't tell you how you're going to survive the animation in Africa mm -hmm. he, can't. he just can't you know the, the advice is going to give you like in my own time because I had some people who had friends in those big companies and you know what they told them to be specialists and it hurts them. Now I encourage people to be specialists now because it's a lot more open. There are more, there, as in, there is more attention now to Africa. People are looking mm -hmm. for talent in Africa as well. So you could become a specialist. You could you you could be good, and then a company wherever you know decides to work with you, maybe remotely or give you a job and all as a specialist. But in my own time, you have to be a generalist. You have to be mm -hmm. able to do more everything. If not, you couldn't survive. 
Right. So, so, so that's it. Uh, so my last question, if someone was producing a documentary about you, what things would you want them to highlight about your life outside of your work in animation? <sighs> this is a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's outside animation. I'm not, I'm not a very public person. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I don't like to put myself out in public, you know? Um, <sighs> what would it be? <laughs> I just, I just want to make a difference really. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I just want to be able to impact people. Now, when my time is up on this earth, people will look back and say, you know what? It was a blessing to have this guy come from this part of the world. Mm -hmm. because he changed things he he showed us opportunities he showed us that this could be possible regardless of where we are from right you know to me that's 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 the goal you know is to leave a legacy to be to be remembered for something mm -hmm. you know in as much as we all want to make money and we want to be we want to live a great life at the end of the day you also want to make sure that you are remembered for something so to me that's that's really the most important thing to me be remembered for something to inspire the next generations because we don't have a lot of that where i'm from mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of people that we can look up to and be be inspired by that wow that guy did this because he did this and it was impossible we have a few people there but they're not much really you know so i would love to be one of those people that the future generations look up to and be like man wow that guy did it regardless regardless of what everybody felt about africa that guy was able to do it and if that guy could do it then i can do it or i, or I could even do it better mm -hmm. so to me that, that, that would be it really make a difference help people yeah. awesome. and share the knowledge yeah <laughs> so where can people follow you and find your work yeah, I'm on I'm on Instagram, Lotus Fly Animation. Just search Lotus Fly Animation on Instagram. Um, I'm also Nuruddin Momodu. You can search me on Instagram. Time Tech Kids is on Instagram. Um, these names are also you can find me on Twitter, Nuruddin Momodu. On LinkedIn, still Nuruddin Momodu. You can find me there too as well. Then my YouTube channel, I haven't posted there in a while. I'm coming next year. That's my goal to be serious. Mm -hmm. with youtube next year i want to i want to get into i'm saying it out again to hold myself <laughs> accountable <laughs> you know i started but i wasn't able to keep up because i had to do freelance work and i couldn't put yeah. in the time but it's something that i really want to do next year really want to do next year maybe if i have to employ an editor or get somebody who will be helping me edit the videos to make it easier so that i can do that as well so you'll find me in lots of animation on youtube as well you can find me there so all right thank you nerdin for coming to my platform and allowing me to highlight you i really appreciate it thank you very much deborah i appreciate thank you for having me i didn't go to <laughs> and to everyone out there i want you to like so i know it's real come and tell me how you feel subscribe to silda deal and sign up for post notifications to show your zeal and i'll see you in the next video peace Bye.